What do you really care about? What do you stand for? What are you willing to stand up for or stand up against? They are questions you will probably ponder as you tour a traveling exhibit now at the International Civil Rights Center and Museum in Greensboro. It's called Americans Who Tell the Truth. Love is the Chief Operating Officer and Director of Development at the Museum. The exhibit is Americans Who Tell the Truth, and it really started with one portrait. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Rob Shatterley, who's the artist, is from Maine and was a surrealist before he started doing this series. And it was 9-11 had just happened in 2001, and Rob said, you know, I, he just felt really moved to do something with his artwork that was more directly connected to what was happening in the world. And uh, he decided to paint one of his heroes, which was Walt Whitman. So he got a picture of Walt Whitman and painted a portrait, much like the ones that you'll see here, um, of Walt Whitman, and then etched a quote of Walt Whitman's, you know, that was very moving to him into the top of the portrait. And, and he really thought that was just going to be it. And just for him, really. And really just for him, yeah, because he just wanted to be more engaged. He was sort of exploring this thing. But then what he found was that he really came alive in painting the portrait. And as people came over to his house and saw the portrait, people were literally moved to tears. And, you know, that made Rob start thinking about, well, maybe I should do more of this. You know, Rob's wife's funny story is that Rob's wife said, Rob, I'm glad that you're thinking about doing this because you've been a much nicer guy and you've just been much more alive since you were painting that portrait of Walt Whitman than I've ever seen you right. before. And so he made a commitment to painting 50 portraits of Americans who tell the truth. Um, and then he said, I'm going to give them all away. And as he got into painting those 50, people were so moved by those, you know, people started to say, well, you also got to paint this. Uh, you can't stop with 50. You need to paint this right. woman. You need to paint that guy. And so now the collection of portraits has grown to be between two and 300 portraits. And it's actually still expanding. And Rob has gone from being, you know, mostly a painter to now a painter, but also really an educator. Mm -hmm. And that the project has turned into being more than just an art project, but really an education project. Okay, so let's talk about it. Is education, because, well, first, you cannot look at these portraits without just being drawn into the faces and the expressions. And then, no, it is. It's really amazing. I mean, because as we were thinking about bringing the exhibit here, I would, you know, I would see pictures of them and look at the website and there's a certain, you know, you can begin to sense the power of them electronically right. or hearing about them, but really beholding them is really something incredible. Um, they are large portraits, you know, painted on wood. They're actually finger painted. Wow. So Rob painted them with his hands and he talks about, you know, at, it's a very intimate experience, he says, painting these portraits, you know, actually with his hands and being right there right. with these people, sometimes for hours at a time. And then what Rob would do as he was painting is simultaneously research the lives of these people. So who were they? You know, what was the context in which they said the quote that would ultimately go up here? He, you know, he would read biographies, watch movies, and ultimately choose the quote that he felt most exemplified who that person is in sort of the spirit of the exhibit. And then he would etch that quote into the, the top or the bottom or the right place on the portrait. So this quote is literally scratched in to the paint, which really just gives it this incredible 3D, you know, quality to it that grabs you, you know, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of sort of texture to it, you know. And Let's walk in so we can see some more of the portraits, and this is a community effort, and I love that this is, a, it's a part of our wider community as far as just people in the country, but also locally, our state and our community, with some of the portraits are, they're spread around Greensboro here and also at Guilford College. That's right. So we're thrilled to partner with Guilford College in particular mm -hmm. around this exhibit. So there's 52 portraits that are here in Greensboro right now. Um, a smaller collection of them are at the Hagee Library at Guilford College, and so you can go there and see those for free at any time. But the bulk of the collection is here at the Civil Rights Museum. And that's important for us because the the civil rights movement clearly is connected to all of the abolitionist and anti-slavery activity that was happening at Guilford College. Right. You know, so that strengthens the connection for us and you know that there's a lot of truth telling that's happened in Greensboro over the years. Um, you know, since the since the 17 and 1800s right up until today. Um, so the portraits, you know, really reflect that as well. Some of the portraits are, you know, people that were mostly active in the 1800s, some of them are people that are alive now. So, it, yeah, the exhibit is really connected to North Carolina and Greensboro in a, in a number of ways. 
And not to mention that um, specific groups and sometimes individuals sponsored portraits so that that particular person could be here. That's right. That's actually the case with all 52 of the portraits. So Ellie Richard, who's the exhibit organizer, you know, had this vision for making this community project from the beginning. And you can see here, this portrait was sponsored by the American Friends Service Committee, Alamance Peace and Action, and, and YWCA, because that particular group said, we got to make sure that Barbara Johns comes to Greensboro. And so every single portrait that's here in the gallery was actually selected by local people and then sponsored by local people because they felt a particular connection to that person in that story. And, and I think as you even look at that and you even just look at that who presented this portrait, it makes you have a connection to that group too, which just you know furthers our connections to people and really that's what this is about. That's right. It's really amazing. And, and, it's great that we're in, being in front of this portrait. So this is Claudette Colvin, who was um, sponsored by Democracy North Carolina. And this portrait is really incredible because who Claudette is, Claudette was the woman who first refused actually to stand up on the bus when she was asked to move to the back. So we know the story of Rosa, Rosa Parks, right. right? So this is, a lot of what this exhibit is, is it sort of gives us the untold history. You know, these are the people that got us to where we are, but we often don't know their stories. Right. So Claudette was, I believe she was 15 <clears throat> at the time that she was sitting on the bus. She was asked to get up and move to the back of the bus. And uh, she just didn't move. And that there were actually interviews done with her afterwards. And as she describes what that experience was like, she says she, there was a part of her that wanted to move, but that she felt that she actually couldn't because she felt Harriet Tubman's hand on one shoulder mm -hmm. and Sojourner Truth on the other, holding, holding her, her down, down into the seat. And so it would actually be her case that rose through the court system and became the case that actually desegregated bus lines across the country. It wasn't actually Rosa Parks' case. Rosa Parks became the public figure, right. you know, of the movement and of that, of the bus integration movement, but it was actually Claudette Colvin's case that did it. So that's really amazing for us, and part of the spirit of this exhibit is to understand that, you know, this is, this is about, primarily, about youth. I mean, it's really about all of us, but we really want to get schools in here and youth in here because it's so critical that people have role models, we feel, so that people, people know that they really can make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, why do we do what we do? So that we might have uh, some sliver of the difference that people like Claudette Colvin and Martin Luther King and Reverend Barber and Ann Braden and other people in this exhibit have had. You said that Robert Shetterly is still painting these portraits and this is actually the most recent one completed? Yeah, that's right, this is the most recent uh, completed portrait is actually unveiled in Asheville when, when the exhibit was in Asheville um, just before coming to Greensboro. This of course is uh, president of the North Carolina NAACP, Reverend William Barber. Um, so. It's just, you know, it's an incredible honor, really. I mean, that, that Rob, who gets solicitations from all over the country and all over the world now, you know, people wanting to, to uh, have him do their portrait, that he selected Reverend Barber because of everything that's happening in our state right now. Um, you know, and, and um, it's amazing because I think that, you know, people in this town, obviously connected to this museum, you know, know the NAACP, know the work that the NAACP has done historically and is, and is doing right now. It, this exhibit is really separated um, or, or kind of divided so that you can kind of find your way around, find an issue that really tugs at your heart, be that right. civil rights, social justice, education, the environment. Right. Yeah, it, that's right. It's really, it's, desi it's, it's divided into sort of um, issue areas. Mm -hmm. So this particular area is religion and spirituality, right? So these are faith leaders, leaders from different spiritual traditions who have told the truth in one way or another. If we, as we walk down the hall this way, we get in, so uh, this is the education and social justice area. So you've got W.E.B. Du Bois, right? Incredible academic historian. You've got Marion Wright Edelman, um, you know, who's just continues to be a leader in thinking about public education and, you know, the role of that is, you know, it's being critical for, for who we want to be as a society. You know, Howard Zinn, you know, who wrote The People's History of the United States, you know, sort of well-known professor. Uh, Noam, Noam Chomsky, um, you know, also another well-known professor at MIT, you know. And the thing about, the issue areas that makes it so nice is that you may not agree with everything about these people, but people do agree that I care about education, or people may agree I really care about the environment. You know, so as you go to the environment section of the exhibit, you see other people over the centuries who have stood for and spoken for things that you might really care about. Right. And so, you know, what I found is that it really helps people connect um, in a human way to the people in the exhibit. Mm -hmm. Right? Because whatever you might feel or have heard about that person, uh, as you read their quote and read their bio, you begin to understand that a lot of what they cared about, you also care about. We're downstairs at the museum now with a lot of portraits. And these are very different, but equally as amazing. 
they really are. This is called our Americans Who Tell the Truth, Truth Tellers Speak exhibit. And this was done in partnership with some, some uh, of the faculty from Guilford College, as well as a lot of partnership from Guilford County Schools, actually art teachers and uh, some of the administration there. And the idea of this project is to give students the opportunity to create their own portraits of Americans who demonstrate courage and commitment and um, you know, values to them. And so kids did portraits in the style of Rob Shetterly's portraits, picking people that were inspiring to them, picking a quote you know, that sort of to them epitomizes what that person was about, and then also providing a bio for that person. So you'll see some sports figures and celebrities, you'll see moms and dads, you'll see yeah. uh, maybe pastors and churches. Yeah, it's really, it's really incredible. This is really inspiring. I think it really gives you a sense of where kids are and what they're thinking about. And we have, you know, students as young as third grade on exhibit here and students as old as, you know, seniors in high school. And so there's a range of sort of artistic talent as well. I think you'll, you'll find that some of the portraits in here really could be professional portraits because they're so incredibly well done. And, and when you see these, these portraits and you see the children who come through the exhibit and kind of their questions and their thoughts after seeing it, what does it tell you about kind of where we're going and, and, and young people and what they're thinking? We had about 150 people here for the opening of this Truth Teller Speak exhibit. So we had a lot, a lot of students who painted these portraits came with their families and their you know, siblings. And uh, so I actually got to hear some of them speak about what this was about for them. Um, and a lot of them said that this was one of the most meaningful art projects that they've ever done you know, as they've been in school. And I think that what it meant to me was that they're, that young people really now really are wanting to engage in conversations about values, you know, and about who we are as a community and as a country and where we're headed. And that when we give them the opportunity to think about truth and, and values and, you know, what they stand for, that they really, that's, they really come alive, you know. And so um, it was really enheartening, you know, to see all these young people um, stepping up and, and talking about what these people that they're painting believed in, but sort of vicariously talking about what they believed in. And interesting that you said it made them come alive just as it made Rob come alive as he yeah, was painting yeah. the portraits or as he continues to paint them. Yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. We had, you know, a couple of the students got up and actually spoke about their work. And so, you know, everything from the conceiving who they're going to paint. I mean, that's a major decision. You get one portrait and who, you know, who are you going to paint? And like, um, as you said earlier, you know, some people chose, you know, leadership in their churches. Some people chose their grandparents. Some people chose celebrities that for one reason or another they really respect or have moved them, you know, and that's amazing. That some of these students that um, are really into celebrities, you know, some of them are into them because that celebrity stood up, you know, as a woman and accomplished something that no one had ever accomplished before, you know, or said something boldly at a concert or an awards event and that students who are 11, 12, 13 are saying that they were really moved by that, you know. Um, and, and so that's really incredible to hear and really to see because it comes through in the portraits as you walk through this gallery. You can see Americans Who Tell the Truth at the International Civil Rights Center and Museum now through February 14th. And you can find out a lot more online. Go to sitinmovement.org to find out about the times, admission prices, and even sponsorship opportunities.